Hey guys, it's time for story time. Let's go ahead and see what our story is about this week. I want everybody to look at the um, title and I want you to tap it out. And when you can tell me what the title says, give me a thumbs up. The title, of course, is just right here. Okay, let's tap it out and read it together. The first word says, P am, Pam, and D, Ann, Dan, Pam, and Dan. And I can see that they're both capitalized, so Pam and Dan must both be names of people. In fact, I'll move my little thing because I made a cute little picture. There you go. And <laughs> this is Sam. Notice that we have quotes again. Who remembers what these quotes, what do these mean? We've had them before. Raise your hand if you can tell us what a quote tells you. What does a quote let you know is happening? That's right. A quote is when someone in the story is saying something, okay? So we are going to read um, this story. We're going to read one sentence at a time, or actually one phrase at a time. So we're going to look at the phrasing, and then you'll repeat me. Okay, so we already read the title, Pam and Dan. Well, this looks exactly like this. So clearly, this must say Pam and Dan. So there you go. We've read the first six words already. Go us. Now let's look at the next one. Raise your hand if you can read this part. Okay, now let's all read it together. Sat on a hill. Now I need somebody to read this, this um, phrase. That's right, everybody repeat it, in the sun. Since there's a period there, we're gonna stop and go all the way back. I'm going to read it with the phrasing, then you're going to repeat me, ready? Pam and Dan sat on a hill in the sun. I want you guys to read that. Here comes Baby Echo, so you know to repeat me or read with me. Pam and Dan sat on a hill in the sun. What's this word? Raise your hand if you can read this word. That's right, it's the word then, then, then. And there's a comma there, that's why it's the only word, a word when you see a comma, you stop, you pause reading, just like when you see punctuation. At the end of a sentence, I pause. At the end of a question mark, I pause. Um, so then, pause. Who can read this part? What happened next? That's right. Sam sat with them. Everybody say that. Sam sat with them. Let's read this whole sentence. I'll read it first. Then Sam sat with them. Everybody read that. Then Sam sat with them. Who can read the next one? And the next one goes all the way from here to here. Good. Pam had a red and tan ball. Let's all say that. Pam had a red and tan ball. Who can read this part? That's right. Let's all read it together from the shop. So now I'm gonna read the whole sentence, then you're going to repeat me. Pam had a red and tan ball from the shop. Everybody read that. Pam had a red and tan ball from the shop. Who can read the words inside the quote? What is this person gonna say? 
That's right. Can you toss it to me? Everybody read it. Can you toss it to me? And that's a question, right? So they used a question mark. Who's saying this? Remember, question marks um, mean that someone's saying it. So typically after a question mark, you'll have something like said or asked or um, told or exclaimed or <coughs> something at an indicator that a person is the one talking. So can you toss it to me, said Dan. So I'm going to read that again and then you're going to read it. Can you toss it to me, said Dan, your turn. Can you toss it to me, said Dan. Oh, look, someone else is going to say something. Raise your hand and read that to us. That's right. It says, pass it back to me. Everybody read that. Pass it back to me. And who said it? Said Sam. Everybody say that with me. Said Sam. I'm going to read that whole sentence. Pass it back to me, said Sam. Your turn to repeat it. Pass it back to me, said Sam. Sam, Pam, and Dan had fun with the ball. I want everybody to say that with me. Sam, Pam, and Dan had fun with the ball. Now I'm going to read the whole story. Listen carefully. Pam and Dan. Pam and Dan sat on a hill in the sun. Then Sam sat with them. Pam had a red and tan ball from the shop. Can you toss it to me? said Dan. Pass it back to me, said Sam. Sam, Pam, and Dan had fun with the ball. Now I'm going to read it one more time and I want you guys to create a mind movie. Later there's a link on the page where it said story time for your teachers to give you a copy of the story so you can mark it. And I'll we'll talk about that in a minute. But before we mark it, let's go ahead and make our mind movies. A mind movie is something you should do every time you read a story. A mind movie is where you create a movie in your head. Here are some pictures of three kids, Pam, Dan, and Sam. Of course, you can use any three kids you want, as long as there's someone that's a Pam, someone you call Dan, and someone you call Sam, because those are the three characters. What are our characters doing? Raise your hand. What are they doing? They're playing with a ball, right? Where are they doing it? The setting is where. Where are they? That's right, they're on a hill in the sun. Okay, so our characters are Pam, Dan, and Sam. The setting, the where they are, is the hill in the sun. And what they're doing is they're playing with the ball. So I'm going to read it again. I want you to close your eyes and think of a movie, because then I'm going to ask you guys what you were thinking of. Okay, close your eyes and listen. Pam and Dan. Pam and Dan sat on a hill in the sun. Then Sam sat with them. Pam had a red and tan ball from the shop. Can you toss it to me, said Dan. Pass it back to me, said Sam. Sam, Pam, and Dan had fun with the ball. Okay, now you can open your eyes and I'm going to read one sentence at a time, and I want someone to raise their hand and tell us what it was you thought of in your mind movie. Pam and Dan sat on a hill in the sun. Raise your hand if you could tell me. Right? You should see two kids, a girl and a boy, sitting on the hill, and the sun is out. Then Sam sat with them. What did you think after I read that? Raise your hand and tell us what you thought then. A third kid, Sam came, right? Absolutely. Pam had a red and tan ball from the shop. What did you see in your mind there? You should have seen the girl 
holding the red and tan ball, or at least the red and tan ball somewhere, by the kids. Can you toss it to me, said Dan. What did you see there? Did you envision something like the picture, or did you envision something different? Envision means what did you see in your mind? Yeah, you might have seen them standing up, passing the ball to one another. And in your mind, you might have looked just at one of the kids who sang, can you toss it to me? Pass it back to me, said Sam. What did you hear? What did you think of then? That's right. The other kid sang, here, throw it back to me. Sam, Pan and Pam and Dan had fun with the ball. Right there, you should think of three kids playing ball and having fun. So maybe in your head, they're laughing or they're smiling or something. Good job, guys. Let's try to read this, this story all together one time. We're going to start with the title, Pam and Dan. Pam and Dan sat on a hill in the sun. Then Sam sat with them. Pam had a red and tan ball from the shop. Can you toss it to me, said Dan. Pass it back to me, said Sam. Sam, Pam, and Dan had fun with the ball. I went ahead and circled all the trick words. Remember, those are words you cannot tap out, okay? You just have to know them. We have and, we have the, from, you, to, me, said. Oops, sorry. If I make this smaller, you'll see that this is the page that I gave the teachers the link to that you guys as children can move the boxes and put them around your glued sounds. Okay, I just click on it. When it makes it blue, I move it. I just pressed one time. And then here's my cute stars that are going to go over my bonus letters. Same thing. You just click it one time, make it blue, and then you drag it where you want, and then you take your hands off. So if your teacher chooses to let you do that activity and pushes that out to you, that's how you do it. Great job today, guys.